Welcome to part seven of the Edward Art Supply hand series titled, I'm not going to tell you, you are crazy. Uh, the link to the full text is going to be down in the description below, as well as a link to Edward's channel. Definitely check it out. So part seven, I'm not going to tell you that you are crazy. Wow, seven parts now. This one might be my favorite so far. I touched on how we should be doing everything we want in our minds with no fear. How doing what we want, which is so simple, frees us. I must say since doing and feeling what I want in my mind, I've never felt so normal and so happy. I genuinely mean that. The moment I have any desire in me, I fulfill it. No questions asked by me. I don't care what it is, how big or small. I do not condition it or wonder if it is possible anymore, or if it's going to work. I just do it. That is starting to become normal, and honestly, I feel normal. When I was trying to abide by all these rules, that's when I was feeling crazy. Neville says it clearly here, that we create the lack and to rise within, and not condition our desires. A quote by Neville, realize that you, yourself brought about this condition of waste and lack and make the decision within yourself to rise to a higher level. The reason most of us fail to realize our desires is because we are constantly conditioning them. Do not condition your desire. Just accept it as it comes to you. Neville. If you've been, if you've been following along, we've touched on how we can do what we want within, changing self metaphors, and now we will focus on an example from Neville. This is my favorite story of Neville. When he was called crazy by Abdullah. This story resonated with me because at first I was just like Neville. I wanted rules to follow so I could feel good about myself. I remember being a Christian and tried my best to follow the rules. No alcohol, no sex, no smoking weed, just reading the Bible and doing what I could for the church. Deep down, I wanted to please God. But now I feel like both characters in this story. When I first read it, I understood Neville. And I somewhat understood Abe. Now I must say, I'm pretty close to understanding Abe in full. All these rules are stupid to me now. That's all I can feel now after doing what I want within. I just feel it's all stupid. But at the same time, I feel so normal for thinking it's stupid. Even though at one point, I thought following these types of rules was the way to live. If you really see your mind as the reality and you fulfill your desire within it, you will see how stupid all this is. For example, I wanted my guilt removed from me. I wanted to stop feeling guilty because from this feeling, I would create all sorts of punishments for myself. These punishments never failed to manifest in my world because it was just reflecting self. So when I started to feel that I could do and feel what I want in my mind, I simply realized I do not want to feel guilty. I don't want it, and that's enough for me to stop it and give myself what I want instead. So I stopped doing that. It's not what I wanted. It truly was that simple. I would spend years trying to remove it, and I never could. But now I see I'm creating the guilt in me. Nobody other than me is creating the fear in me. I wanted it gone. So I started to feel that I can have what I want. I allowed myself freedom to be at peace instead of guilt. I allowed myself the freedom to feel what I wanted. I stopped feeling scared in my own mind. And I felt that I could do anything there. I stopped following the rules. You must feel grateful. You must make sure you fall asleep perfectly in this feeling. Make sure you think these thoughts instead of the bad ones. Let me tell you, the greatest self-concepts, the greatest feelings, the greatest thoughts are the ones you want to have. So let's get into my favorite story. Let me tell you why I am doing what I'm doing today. It was back in 1933 in the city of New York, and my old friend Abdullah, with whom I studied Hebrew for five years, was really the beginning of the eating of all my superstitions. When I went to him, I was filled with superstitions. I could not eat meat. I could not eat fish. I could not eat chicken. I could not eat any of these things that were living in the world. I did not drink. I did not smoke. 
I was making a tremendous effort to live a celibate life. So here Neville's telling us why he is even imagining in the first place, why he's doing this. Because even though I feel normal doing this, to others it may seem crazy. But I don't care. It's just a reflection. I just feel nobody can embarrass you for what you say. Neville had all these rules he must follow or else. So he's trying to be good. In some ways, many people would actually applaud his efforts. Actually, most would. He's living a moral, honest, and dedicated life. To the world, he might be looked at as being very healthy for not smoking or drinking. So many people, and myself included, although not so much now, would become afraid at the thought of giving yourself the freedom of having no more rules. Or we point to the world and think, people can't just eat and drink what they want. You can't just sleep around all the time. Smoking's not good, and it should not be done. But again, no one to change but self. This is not about the other people. This is about you. There is no need to focus on what others should do here. Other people are not your concern. Your only concern should be, am I doing and feeling what I want in my mind right now? You will naturally find yourself surrounded by people who reflect you. Abdullah said to me, I'm not going to tell you you are crazy, Neville, but you know you are. All these things are stupid, but I could not believe they are stupid. Neville simply could not see how these things were stupid. He followed all these rules to be good. So what is the underlying feeling here? He feels like he is wrong or bad. So he creates rules to tame this wrongness. And if he follows the rules, he then can call himself good. He's trying to find a way to be good. We have all been there. Neville calls this state John the Baptist. He says that all the religions in the world are in the state of John the Baptist, the mindset of rules. Neville once said, we must learn to know ourselves as infinite love, as good rather than evil. There's not something that we have to become. It is rather for us to recognize something that we already are. Do not just do this for infinite love, but apply this to everything. So what changed in Neville? He saw something, he changed. Abdul called him crazy because he was. Neville, although the world may be thinking he's a living a well-structured life, Abe saw him as crazy. Why? Because when you free yourself in your mind, all these rules are just plain stupid. Not drinking a beverage does not make you worthy of anything. It doesn't make sense. Do it if you want. And if you don't want to, then don't do it. But to have these worries or quibbles, as Abe calls them, is to be crazy. Adding guilt to yourself is nothing more than being crazy. No one can punish you if you do not punish yourself. Others will condemn us only as long as we continue in that which they condemned ourselves. So happy is the man that condemneth itself, not in that which he alloweth. For to life nothing is condemned, all is expressed. Life does not care whether you call yourself rich or poor, strong or weak. It will eternally reward you for that which you claim as true of yourself. The measurements of right and wrong belong to man alone. To life there is nothing right or wrong. Neville. I remember what Abdullah had said to me. After you have proven this law, you will become normal, Neville. You will come out of that graveyard, and you will come out of that dead past where you think you are being holy. For all you are really doing, you know, you are being so good, Neville, you are good for nothing. These words are pretty intense. Imagine living a life putting all this effort to be good, and someone tells you you are crazy and you are good for nothing. Abdulli truly thought it was stupid beyond respect. If you live a life with all these rules, Abe would tell you you are living in a graveyard. But the most fascinating thing he said here is, after you have proven this law, you will become normal. Normal. This is a feeling. Said so to Abe, giving yourself what you want in your mind is normal. It is abnormal to not give yourself what you want. Isn't that amazing? It will always reflect self, and you will prove the law to yourself. To prove this law, 
You must start by giving yourself what you want without condition in the mind first, or else you will point to some physical cause. You won't believe you caused it. But to Abe, knowing you are the cause, that makes you normal. If you want to truly prove this law, start by changing self radically. See yourself entirely different by feeling what you want to be. It was the year 1933. I was unemployed and had no place to go except a little room on the 75th street. I went straight to my old friend Abdullah and said to him, Abe, the strangest feeling is possessing me. For the first time in 12 years, I want to go to Barbados. If you want to go, Neville, you have gone, he replied. If you want to go, you have gone. There's a desire. Then fulfill it to the end with no conditioning. All done in the mind. You go to the end. Not because you must, but because that is what you want. You feel that you have it. Not because you must, but because that is what you want. You visualize yourself there in the end. Not because you must, but because that is what you want. So when the feeling or desire comes up upon you as it did for Neville, you do what Abe says, because that is what you want to do. Suppose my wants cannot materialize for six months to a year. Do I wait to imagine them? What is Neville's answer? When the feeling or desire comes upon you, that is the time to accept it in fullness. Do not wait. Do not put it off. Accept it in fullness. That is truly what you want to do. Guilt is feeling that you are not able to think what you want. You may desire to think and feel what you want, but the moment you do that, you restrict yourself of that for the sake of the past or fear of the future. You may think of things that you've done that you dislike or things that were done to you that you disliked. And because of this, you can't imagine what you want. But the question you should be asking yourself is, is that what you want? Do you want to restrict yourself? Do you want to be guilt-free or fear of the future? Of course not. Then learn to give yourself what you want in your mind, and what you want is freedom to have what you want. The issue is resolved by feeling that you can have what you want. A quote by Edward. Thank you for listening.